Today, we're talking tantrums. Most parents are going to have to deal with them at some point in their child's development. Does that mean that we can't do anything about them? No. Today, we're going to talk about the things you can do before, during, and after a tantrum in order to help your children better learn how to regulate their emotions and help find a little bit more peace in your house. Let's talk about tantrums, why they happen and why they exist and why do kids even have to have tantrums? Tantrums occur in 90% of three and four year olds. That means that most parents are going to go through at least a period where tantrums are going to be a part of your life. First, what are tantrums? Tantrums are a very severe emotional reaction to some kind of stressor. Now, sometimes it happens because as a parent, you tell your child no, or you set a boundary, or they can happen because your child doesn't have a way to tell you something that they want and they get very frustrated. But ultimately, the main reason that they happen is because your child is having some kind of severe emotional reaction to something and they don't know how to better express it. The two, three, four, and five year ranges the entire milestone is about trying to learn how to understand and cope with all of these new emotions that they are experiencing. A two-year-old is starting to develop some kind of independence. They're learning that I have these goals, these things that I want, and either I don't have the physical capability to be able to get it, or there is this person in my life who is preventing me from being able to have that thing. And as a result, I am now having to deal with this fact that, wow, I feel all of this stuff and I don't know what to do with this. When we're looking at tantrums, there's a few things we need to consider. We need to consider the before, we need to consider the during, and we also need to consider the after. That the most important parts of this are the before and the after, because those are the things that can make tantrums less likely and more manageable. So let's talk about the before. The thing with emotions is we can be already primed to have a more intense reaction than what really the situation deserves. Now, tantrums in themselves are above and beyond what we would normally expect, but we know that there are some things that can make tantrums more likely to be intense. H-A-L-T-S. When children are hungry, whether they're getting too much food or they're not getting enough food, that can lead them to be more likely to have an intense emotional reaction. The same thing is if they are anxious or stressed. When there is a lot of stress going on in their lives, maybe a big move or maybe they've just started going to preschool and having to be separated from their parents, or in 2020, we have COVID. Any of those things can make tantrums more likely. The L stands for loneliness. Children who are not getting enough exposure to other people or if they are getting too much exposure to people, like every minute of their day is planned and they're out with people and they're doing things, that can be really overstimulating. I also like in this area to look at schedules. So sometimes we plan this entire day of we're going to take kids and we're going to go to the store and then we're going to go visit our grandma and then we're going to go to uh, get some food and then we're going to go to your big brother's sports thing. And for a two-year-old, that's just going to be way too much in their day. So sometimes we need to really consider if we're putting way too much in their schedules. The inverse of that can be true as well. Are we not having enough planned in their day? Are they at their own devices and not having any kind of structure and being able to know what's coming next? That unknowing can lead to a lot of anxiety in children and as a result, you might have more tantrums. The T is for tired. So we need to be really considering children's sleep. A two-year-old needs right around 14 hours of sleep, which includes their nap. If they're only getting eight, seven hours of sleep in the night, that can absolutely be a reason that they're having more emotional reactions. And the last one is sick. So if children are not feeling well, then absolutely they're going to be a little bit more likely to have intense emotional reactions. We also need to consider the parent side of this. If as a parent, you are not getting enough food or not enough nutritious foods, you're anxious or stressed, 
you are not getting enough socializing, if we're not getting enough sleep or we're oversleeping, which I know is probably kind of tough for a parent to do, but it is possible to not get enough sleep. And as a result, then we are not able to be better present for kids, which means we might be a little bit quicker to get angry. And that can lead kids to have more intense reactions. So when we're looking at tantrums, we can't just consider what's going on with the child. We do need to consider what is happening with us as the parents. And lastly, if you're sick, of course you're not going to be on top of your game. Ideally, we have another parent there, but we're in a world where a lot of single parent homes exist and we don't always have that support. And whether you're sick or not, or tired or not, we have to try and be present for our children. So sometimes, as the parent, we have a little bit more of a capability of being able to manage what's happening. And as a result, we are able to maybe just be aware that, wow, I'm not really feeling 100% today. And as a result, I need to be extra careful about how I choose to respond when my children are having different situations throughout the day. So using that HALTS system, we can really help ourselves in being more aware of what's going on with our children and ourselves, which can help to prevent some tantrums. Again, 90% of young children have tantrums, so we're not going to prevent them all. Our goal is going to be to try and reduce how often they happen and reduce their intensity. And in the latter parts, we're going to be talking about teaching the skills that make it so that children don't have tantrums in the future. Okay. Let's talk about during the tantrum. The number one thing we can do during a tantrum is stay calm. I know it is really hard, especially if we go back to the beginning stuff and we realize that we're hungry, we're anxious or stressed, we're lonely or we're tired. Whenever our children have a tantrum in those cases, it's harder to stay calm and be present with them rather than overreacting to it. Staying calm helps for several reasons. Number one being, if we are calm, it is more likely that we'll be able to help our children get to a calmer state. A dysregulated parent cannot regulate a dysregulated child. So if we are calm, we'll be in a much better place to be able to be present for them and help them through this stressor that they're going through. Additionally, if we're not calm, emotions have a tendency to feed off of each other. So think about a time when you've been angry. Maybe it was with your partner or a parent or a friend and they respond to you with anger. Does that usually help you calm down? The answer is probably no, right? It usually it escalates. And what happens in these situations is it escalates and escalates and escalates until that one person has to do that thing that blows up the argument and puts like the punctuation mark on it and says, all right, it's done because I've said the absolute thing that is either going to turn this to blows, or we're both going to be so mad that we have to separate. Never has getting angry helped calm a tantrum. Also during tantrums, it can be really helpful to talk to the feeling that your child is experiencing in that moment. So just relating to, wow, you're just, you're so angry and you're upset and I get it. And try not to do it in like a super calm you're just so angry and upset. Actually have some emotion in it. Meeting them where they are a little bit in their emotions can help them feel a little bit more heard. It's called mirroring. It really does help us to feel felt and it can help us to regulate easier because again, when we feel felt, it really does help us to calm ourselves. So saying, yeah, you just feel so mad right now that you just don't even know what to do with these feelings. I see your fists are so clenched right now. By doing that, children will be like, yeah, this person, they totally understand what I'm experiencing right now. And that can help them to regulate. In dealing with tantrums, we also need to understand that something that worked in the past may not work in the future. And we need to be aware of that. It doesn't mean, it's not a sign that we can't use that again, but it's a sign that in that moment, that's not what the child needed. Understanding that sometimes we can distract from tantrums. Sometimes we're going to give them space and say, I can tell you're just so mad at me that maybe you just need some space and you don't want to even see me right now. And that's okay. I will be right here when you're ready. And letting them know that I'm not going to be mad at you if you need some space from me and that you can communicate that with me and that I'm still going to be here whenever you're done, which is the number one thing with tantrums. Children have these and they need to know that after it's done, my parents are still there for me, they still care for me, and they still love me. 
Let's talk about what happens after the tantrum. Once everything has calmed, we've regulated, the house is now in a calm state, now is the time where we need to really think about what is the skill that our child is missing in this situation that led for them to resort to a tantrum. It could be they don't know how to solve this problem. So maybe sometimes they just need to learn some skills to better manage problems. Maybe they need to learn better ways of communicating when they need something or learning how to ask for help whenever they're stressed out. Maybe they really wanted something and they just didn't think to ask for help. And by teaching them that skill in the future, not every time they're going to get it, but in the future, they'll be more likely to ask for help. If you want to take it a step further, we'll practice these skills with them. So we might say, oh, let's go practice this thing so we're ready for next time. So we'll go into the kitchen. We'll say, oh, that cup is out of reach. What can you do to solve this problem? And then they say, oh, I can ask for help. And you say, yeah, maybe try. Mom, can I get help with the cup? Or mom, help please. And then you help them and you look, yeah, look, see, it worked. Maybe they need emotional regulation skills. Maybe they just need to learn better ways of dealing with frustration. So teaching them deep breaths or stretching or taking a break for a minute or moving on to something else and then coming back, those skills can help them better manage whenever they're too frustrated to focus on the puzzle or whatever problem arose. By working on these things after the tantrum, it can really help us because we're teaching kids skills so that when these similar situations happen in the future, they have something that they can rely on. Right now, they don't have these skills. And as a result, it becomes an emotional explosion. So if your child is having tantrums, number one, do not worry too much because they're normal. Two, there are things that we can do before during and after them that can make them less intense, less frequent, and can also teach them skills that will help them in the future. In the comments below, let me know some of the things that you've done during tantrums that have actually helped them to calm faster.